question comes from Deborah Borson. Uh, we've got round to Mike, um, and the question quotes your name, Mike. Um, Mike Frigger is quoted in today's Jewish news as saying a non Jewish MP is able to represent Jewish constituents more forcefully, as they can't be accused of having a vested interest. Given accusations of dual loyalties are commonly used to silence or delegitimize Jewish voices in the public sphere, how would the candidates respond to this statement? I'd like to start with you. I think the, uh, the comments in the round I've said for a long time is in the House of Commons, uh, you'll find that the most ardent arguers against the delegitimization of Israel, anti Semitism, any form of discrimination, you will find at the very front of that argument are non Jewish MPs. And I pay tribute actually to the Labour MP, John Mann, who chairs, uh, I'm the uh, Vice President of the Royal Party of Anti Semitism, he's actually the chairman of it. And what you find in the political discourse, whether we like it or not, is that those of us who are not Jewish are able to argue forcefully that it's either a constituency issue or something we believe in passionately. And that's what I stand up for is I can say with my hand on my heart that I'm fighting against anti-Semitism, it's what I believe in, and it's also what my constituents believe in. Being able to have that strong blend of a constituency and personal interest places me in a strong position to fight for my Jewish constituents. represents us best and the policies that represent us best. I haven't heard this um, before, but I would certainly vote for a, I would vote for a Jewish candidate. I, um, I would actually like to see actually more Orthodox Jewish candidates in Parliament. I, I think that's missing. Um, having spent time on this hustings, I think the dark horse among us is Jonathan Davis. Um, and uh, I don't think I should take into account is he from my religion or not. We should vote for the person who represents us and whose policies represent us. A politician should be able to rise above that and be objective uh, and represent everybody. When, in the, when a long, long time ago there was a debate in Parliament about whether to admit Jews as MPs, the great liberal peer Lord McCauley said, it's not about Jews representing Jews or Christians representing Christians. It's about having a parliament of Jews and Christians to represent a country of Jews and Christians. There is a large Jewish population in this constituency. There's also a large Muslim population, a large Hindu population, a large Christian population, and a large atheist population. And whoever is selected, and whoever is selected or elected, and elected as your MP, Will bring their values, and I will bring my Jewish values into politics. But whoever is elected will represent and must represent the entirety of this constituency, whatever their religious views. Like Jonathan, if I'm elected as the MP for Finchley and Golders Green, then I look forward to representing those of all faiths and of no faiths. It's part of the power of politics that I think one can use one's identity, channel one's values to inform the politics and the campaigns that one pursues, but also to transcend those values. And I don't think that a Jewish MP would represent the, in the interests of the constituents of Finchley and Golders Green, including the large Jewish community, any less effectively than would a non-Jewish MP. We have a wonderful, diverse, and tolerant society, and I think we've moved on from this sort of attitude. I've lived and worked all around the world uh, in many different cultures and societies and enjoyed all of them. My own family, uh, half of my own family is from Europe and, and, and Asia as well. But if you take any good thing, take any good thing you can imagine, like the police, the NHS, climate change, house building, take any good thing you can think of, it needs to be controlled. We need a controlled NHS, we need controlled house building, we need control of our carbon output so we can protect our environment. And similarly, 
we need control of our immigration policy and control of our borders. We absolutely need this in order to keep the beautiful and diverse communities that we have.